Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I have a beautiful game that, no, see, y'all was about to say, y'all was about to think that I was going to say a beautiful game that I played. No, guys. This game right here is actually one of my students, uh, Jimmy, shout out to him. You know, uh, man, he played, he played this black lion like a G. You know, I mean, he finessed the game. It was, man, I was excited, man. That joint was crazy, man. I loved it, though. So, uh, I definitely want to uh, share with y'all uh, this game to let you know that, you know, my students, man, they they put in the work, man. They start, you know what I mean, attacking, you know, which is what I like to see. And for all y'all that's actually enrolled in the Maurice Bishop Chess University, make sure that y'all continue to send your games so I can post it you know, on his channel and everything, you know, because, you know, uh, I like to share the wealth and everything, all right, you know, so, uh, I, obviously, his, uh, his name on here is, uh, Attack Positional, uh, that's what, uh, his, uh, name is on, uh, chess.com, uh, but yeah, man, he, he, um, pretty, uh, Jimmy, man, he, he killed this man, for real, uh, but he played against his opponent named, uh, Samir, underscore 21 so without further ado let's actually get right to this game all right so uh his opponent played uh e4 and uh e5 is played knight f3 d6 bishop c4 h6 uh h3 knight f6 uh white castles knight b to d7 uh d3 and then c6 not a problem obviously it's not the the, the move order but uh in this position it works because again his opponent didn't really do any didn't have any threats didn't really do anything really but so far so good so c3 uh queen c7 correct you know over protecting the e5 pawn uh, which is great uh bishop e3 and then g5 hit him with the g5 this is what i'm talking about guys that g5 the ace when we uh when he went a6 it wasn't just to prevent the knight from coming to g5 but in the future we want to go g7 to g5 correct move uh knight b to d2 uh rook g8 uh again still not bad uh i do like bishop e7 for, i mean it really don't matter the move order as far as um that but especially the way on uh, white's position is or his opponent uh but rook g8 works uh d4 is played then bishop b7 good move uh literally he just uh you know what i mean jimmy is, is going i mean he's doing every move right you know what i mean uh d catches d5 d catches d5 and then g4 the problem with on um, white's um, move with the g4 thing like you're really open you're really opening your king side up like a lot like you know you're really opening it up and you're gonna see why this is this g4 is just such a weakening uh, to his king side so we're gonna definitely see that in the future um why uh, it's a mistake uh so knight f8 is played then knight b3 and then um b6 now i understand why he goes b6 to prevent the knight from coming to c5 but i mean even with that being said uh it's just eh. I honestly i, I kind of like the move b5 uh, B5 uh, was also um, a great move as well, which I like uh, because you're extending on the queen side, but also you'll you'll be able to control or at least Jimmy will be able to control uh, not only the queen side, but he'll be just controlling the king side as well. So if I don't know if white decides to go back to bishop E2, then um, uh, he could have went knight E6 because, again, he's guarding the C5 square as well. But also he has moves like a5 and a4 to get this knight out the way. But even if not, uh, we're still threatening uh, moves like uh, knight f4. Or maybe the better move in my eyes is h5. I would definitely go h5 um, after this. And I think this is winning for black automatically. Like you, you can't tell me different. But uh, I think b5 would would have been correct, and then knight e6 guarding the c5 square. But also at the same time pushing on h5, which uh, can end the game very quickly as well. Uh, so definitely, um, for y'all that's watching, definitely um, remember that as well. Uh, but this, this 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 was really good. But b6, uh, not not a bad move, but uh, 
I like B5, you know, because I like to control the uh, king side and the queen side as well. And then at the same time, you know, uh, you you, you want you want to make sure you ain't giving white no chances of trying to do anything in the center. Uh, make sure that you know he completely don't know what he's doing. You know, make it make it like that in in psychology. Like ain't nothing that he could really do. All right, so um, B6 is played. Um, Rook C1 and then uh, Knight G6. Uh, great move. Uh, A4 is played and then A5 and. I always talk about, and the reason why I always talk about a five guy is just to prevent White from expanding on the queen side. You know, uh, he puts a stop to that, uh, which is not a not a. I mean, this is actually a really good move. Uh, the crazy part about it is uh, even the engine. The engine doesn't even consider knight. I, I want to go back real quick because I wanted to show y'all. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was somewhere all the way in the back. Yeah. So like. After all this, instead of knight a8, I, I just want y'all to get y'all to understand. The engine, obviously, is just never going to consider knight f8, but the computer did mention knight c5, which they found this to be the best move. Uh, however, I don't like playing uh, knight c5 again. Uh, I mean, I do have an idea why knight c5, due to maybe uh, the knight on c5 can come back to e6 with the threat of h5. You know, um, that could be the reason. but I personally don't play C5 unless I really have to. In this position, Black really had no reason to go uh, Knight C5. That's just personally me. Uh, maybe some grandmasters may tell me different. I don't know. But I personally, how I win games, I, I don't win. I win more by going Knight F8 uh, and then G6 or maybe E6. Uh, but Knight C5, no. I, I played Knight C5 before, just to let y'all understand. I do play Knight C5 before, but. You know, I, I, in this type of position that white uh, position is, uh, knight f8 is, is great. All right, so rook c1. All right, all right, now rook e1. All right, knight f4. Knight f4 is the move. I love it. Knight f4. Bishop captures f4. Then g catches f4. Now, um, black has this open g file, which is a beautiful g file. I'm loving it, man. I'm just so loving it. Queen D2. And then... And the crazy part, guys, the engine don't even recommend this move. Now, how I teach or whatever, I don't really use... I don't really use, like, computer-like moves or whatever. I like to... I like attacking. And I give principles uh, when it comes to attacking. So, and again, the engine doesn't uh, even suggest uh, what... <laughs> My student did. Uh, obviously, H5 is what the engine was saying uh, to move H5, but I don't like to move H5 because you go H5 and G5. Ah, I don't really like it. I mean, you do get Bishop captures H3, and don't get me wrong, it's still winning. But I like the I like the the finesse. I like the attacking ability. And honestly, my student did exactly what I would have did and everything, and which is why I'm very pleased with it. Um, Bishop captures G4. Oh, yes. Bishop catches G4, guys. I, oh, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sack. H catches G4. Knight catches G4. Um, obviously, his opponent goes King F1, trying to get away. And then Rook D8. Beautiful, beautiful move. This D5. I'm telling you, man, I'm about to tear up, man. I'm about to tear up. Real. <laughs> Yeah, man, Rook D8, Queen C2, and then uh, Queen C8. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. Oh, my goodness. Why is Queen C8 such a beautiful move? Because, number one, the king is on the light squares. You know, these are light squares. So, putting the queen on the light squares, you know, eventually he's going to want to get to Queen H3, uh, which is uh, the right move. But also, guys, there is a mating pattern. There is definitely a mating pattern um, with this as well. So. Uh, rook c to d1. Obviously, his opponent wants to exchange um, pieces. You know, the more he can exchange pieces, the more he can, you know, uh, you know, when you exchange pieces and everything, you know, you'll uh, decrease, you know, the uh, your opponent's attacking ability. You know, which is one of the principles. But huh, Jimmy, Jimmy, man, he found he found the move. Ninety three, ninety three check, man. 
Uh, obviously, checking and, you know, about to win the queen. So, obviously, you know, with white, it's kind of forced. You know, he got to take as captures e3. And then the move, queen h3, check. Oh, my goodness. Man, this is over. I'm pretty sure all y'all can see the mate coming, right? So, mind you, the rook is already on the d file. So, it's not like he could run very far, you know? So, but, of course, his opponent played king f2. And then rook g2, checkmate. Yes, guys, checkmate. Now, if he would have played, uh, it doesn't matter what uh, his opponent played. Uh, I mean, even if he come here, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, queen g2 uh, is still checkmate, as y'all can see in this position. Uh, but yes, definitely, uh, this was definitely a... Crazy uh black line game. Uh this was uh definitely crazy. Uh and no guys, um uh, when I say rook g2, uh rook g2 is not checkmate uh yet, but I mean obviously if he goes king f1, then obviously y'all already know guys this is uh checkmate after knight f1. I mean I mean after knight g1 and then you know this is checkmate. But uh but after rook g2, uh his opponent uh resigned um in his position. Uh yeah. This 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 was this was crazy, man. This was a beautiful um black lion game. That's how you play the black lion. So for all y'all that's watching, you know definitely, uh, uh y'all can definitely um check out the black lion. Y'all can definitely check out the Maurice Bishop Chess University, where I also teach y'all the black lion. You know attacking principles. You know all of that, guys. So um if y'all trying to learn the black lion, definitely uh go to Maurice Bishop Chess University and get yourself enrolled. And it's an affordable price. And guys, um, if you are unsure, if you click on my link below, you can literally talk to me personally. And whatever it is that you're trying to learn or whatever, we can actually discuss that as well. Uh, too, too easy, guys. All right. So, guys, the next game that I'm going to uh, go to. Uh, oh, time to go. My bad guy. I'm just making sure because uh I'm actually on lunch break. So I'm just making sure that, you know, because we have this military class and all that. So that's pretty much what that is. All right. So with that being said, guys, uh, so uh, I'm going to show you all another game, guys, which is what I play. Uh, this is with my secret weapon opening um, for black. Uh, definitely, definitely, guys, uh, a crazy, crazy, crazy crazy game <laughs> and literally guys if you if you're not following uh follow me on my um uh, tiktok definitely follow me on my tiktok uh it's maurice bishop chess um just go on my tiktok guys uh there's a lot of games on there that i don't like post on youtube because it's not that i don't want to post on youtube it's just that i don't have a lot of time uh because of my job because of the military i do a lot of stuff and as y'all see this is like my lunch break and i'm you know trying to post some uh, new contact, you know, to help y'all out, you know, to give y'all something to, um, you know, talk about and learn from and things like that. So uh, without further ado, let's actually get started right away. Um, obviously, guys, I played as black. My opponent played as white. And um, I think this guy's, uh, this, the person I played was a, a, a 2500 and everything. Uh, and this was, and this game is actually off of chess.com, and this is not on lead chess, but I use lead chess because it's just easier to import the games and all that. But anyway, he plays d4, I play e5, d catches e5, and d6. Uh, knight f3, bishop g4, and then bishop g5. So, I'm starting to get this a lot, guys, now. Uh, and like I said, you'll see a lot of this, guys, uh, in the Maurice Bishop Chess University. I do teach this opening as well. Uh, it's definitely um, in depth or whatever, so you'll definitely be able to understand exactly a lot of the moves that I do now. So, uh, after bishop g5, I just go queen d7, um, e catches d6, bishop catches d6, and then knight c3. Alright, so it almost looks like, you know, my position, um, to most people, it may not look that good. It may look like it could be drawish or whatever, but it's really, really not, and, and it surprises a lot of people. Um, I go knight c6, he's developing. Um, the whole point of this is uh, I want to castle queenside as fast as possible and start an attack as fast as possible, which is what I want to do. So, queen d5. 
Um, queen d5 is played. What he's doing is he wants to uh, centralize his queen. But also, uh, White also would like to castle queen side as well and try to start some type of attack. Again, this is a strong 2500, guys, for real. Uh, I go f6, and I go f6 uh, to not only push the bishop away, but also I want to block him so that I can castle queen side myself because that's really the whole point of my opening, castling queen side, develop my pieces as fast as possible, and attack as fast as possible. So, bishop h4, I castle queen side. He castles queen side, and then I develop my last piece with a tempo with knight g to e7. Y'all see that? So I'm attacking his queen. He decides to get close to my queen side as well. Uh, I decide to get another tempo with the move a6. He moves again. So because his rook is on a d file, you know, uh, my bishop, my dark square bishop can't move anywhere because of my queen is on his file. So I needed to move this right away, which is why I move queen f5. Alright? So I go queen f5. My opponent plays e3. Because, again, he has one piece that's not developed. So he had to go um, e3 in order to develop as well. And also, I'm very aware that, you know, uh, sometimes people may want to sack on um, a6. But I realize that, you know, it doesn't work the way that it, um, it would like for them to work. You know, so uh, so I've been in that situation before. Uh, so what I did is I played queen h5. Now the whole point of queen h5, guys, because I get a lot of times uh, opponents will miss it. Uh, they may make moves like h3 to drive my uh, bishop away. Uh, the problem, uh, really the problem with this move is uh, you're weakening your pawn structure, number one, uh, which is really bad. So... You're weakening your pawn structure, and then I'm winning the pawn with a tempo uh, off of this rook right here. You know, and it's not something that you uh, really want to do, especially um, in the end game. This would be very good, great for me, especially since I have uh, the pawn g5 that can um, move up as well. Uh, so in a position like this, uh, it's not very, uh, it's not very good. All right. So, which is why uh, my pawn didn't go h3 at all. So. After queen h5, he decides to go bishop e2, uh, which is actually better. Um, again, guys, uh, usually when I come here, usually I would like to go bishop catchers f3 and then win the bishop on, uh, a f on h4. But the problem is the queen is already here. So I understood that. Um, so I was actually looking at it from uh, a pawn structure wise, where maybe if I take it to the end game, you know, uh, I'll have a better pawn structure. All right. I'm turning this thing down real quick. Hold on, guys. All right. Uh, so, bishop e2. Uh, and what I played in this, I played bishop b4. Now, the whole point of me playing bishop b4, guys, is not just to take this knight and open up his queen side. Again, because I blocked the bishop or I blocked the queen from this rank, now I'm threatening bishop catchers at three, hoping to take the dark square bishop. Obviously, my opponent sees this, right? So, in other words, guys, if you see. Uh, h3 if i take and he takes now i can win this dark square bishop and now i'm up a piece all right so after bishop b4 my opponent actually saw uh, saw that which is why he goes bishop g3 all right so after bishop g3 uh i go bishop capture c3 and, and, I'm, and i'm happy about the position because now you know i'm opening up his on um, queen side so b capture c3 and now I go king b8, which is a prophylactic move. I just want to make sure that I'm getting out of any um, light squares areas, uh, which is why I did that. Uh, h3 is played, and I play bishop b6. Obviously, guys, I don't want to take due to uh, this bishop becoming very active. And, you know, he got two bishops in hand. Uh, it becomes very active, and that's not how I want to uh, play this game. So that's why uh, I chose bishop e6. Um, you know, and that, and that's what I did. So after bishop e6, uh, my opponent plays on um, king b2, and then I go knight c8, uh, in which I can potentially go knight b6. So queen f4 is played, and as you can see, uh, he plays this because now he's threatening uh, queen captures uh, c7 check, uh, trying to get to my uh, my king, right? 
So what I did is I defend by going queen a5. So not only am I defending um, the the c7 pawn, you know, preventing the queen from coming here, but also I'm threatening queen captures a2. So again, guys, it's good to defend, but always look for counterattacks. Look for something where you can actually uh, defend, but attack at the same time where you can still put pressure on your king, which is what I did here. So uh, he goes a3, preventing me from capturing on a2 and all that, right? So then, this is crazy, guys. I ain't gonna lie, guys. Uh, I thought I made a mistake. Uh, I, I was thinking for a little bit, and, and again, this is like a... I believe this was a three minute game. I think it was a three minute or bullet. I'm not really sure. I think it was a three minute, but uh I played knight b6. And uh and as y'all can see, guys, he gets this queen catcher um c7. So I thought I made a mistake and everything. I was I guess for five seconds I panicked, but then I was like, uh, I might actually still be good. So uh I go king a7. And yes, guys, I'm not afraid to say that I think I made a mistake because nobody is ever perfect, so you know. I don't claim to be perfect. I, I make mistakes too. Uh, but uh, but when I analyzed, I realized that uh, King A7 was, or Knight B6 was the actual correct move. And I think uh, the reason why it's the correct move in the computer's uh, engine or whatever, they might think that it was right. Because, uh, again, I go by the attacking principle. Uh, if I have uh, three or more pieces surrounding the king, I either have some type of tactics or I have some type of mating attacks going on. So I always live by this principle, and I and I tell y'all every single time that when you have three or more pieces surrounding the king, you either have a mating attack going, or you have some type of tactics where it will give yourself um, a big advantage. You know, so I live by that principle. So uh, after King A7, my opponent goes Rook captures D8. I go Rook captures D8, and my opponent plays uh, Rook D1. You know, just exchanging pieces down. So. The move that I did, guys, that shocked them. The craziness. The madness. <laughs> Crazy, guys. The move I played was Queen Capture C3 check. <laughs> so, again, guys, when y'all probably like, man, I would have never seen that move. Well, guys, the thing is, if you once you understand principle and you start studying tactics on a daily you will be able to see these type of moves as well, guys. It's not as complicated as you may think, but again, guys, the more you study tactics, you know, enforcing moves, the more you'll start um, be able to see these type of moves. So queen catches c3. Now, the move, the best move for white to do in this position is king b1, but as you can already know, guys, this is pretty much uh, losing for uh, white because uh, if he goes king b1, Rook captures d1, bishop captures d1, and then knight c4. And this game is literally over. There is no way he could stop this mate. Uh, of course, if maybe if he goes bishop b5, but again, I would just take. And again, there's no way he could stop this mate at all. But of course, that's not how the game went. How the game went was uh, he actually took my queen. He goes, I go queen catcher c3, he takes, and then I hit him with knight a4 checkmate. Why is it checkmate? Because the knight is guarding his b2 square. Uh, the king can't go b3 because the light square bishop is guarding. And of course, you can't go to none of these files because of the rook that's on the d file. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy me, huh? I had to show y'all this, man. This is um, pretty crazy. Um, so guys, uh, I know... You know, I haven't really uh, uploaded uh, so much due to my military career with all day I'm at class and everything. But um, during break, you know, I decided to, you know, post something. Uh, so I hope y'all actually enjoy it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, comment. Uh, let me know what you think. And also, guys, if you have not, if you're interested in, be in improving your chess and becoming a strong attacking player, make sure you enroll in Maurice Bishop Chess University, where, again, guys, uh, not only do you get the, the video courses and my lead chess study forum and everything, but guys, you also get to talk to me personally. You can talk to all of my students. Uh, they all they all get an opportunity to talk to me. And even if you're overseas and everything, I don't care where in the world you're at, you know, uh, you can still talk to me uh, using Zoom, you know, simple as that. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty straightforward, guys. I'm human just like everybody else and everything, you know. Uh, like I said, I, I definitely care about y'all well-being and definitely care about y'all improving as well. So, uh, 
So again, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And also, guys, just do me one last thing for all y'all that's not subscribed. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so, guys, because if you ain't subscribed to my channel, then what are you doing? <laughs> all right, guys. Peace.